So, today I will talk about um, axioms of probability. So, I start talking to you about developing the theory of uh, probability and um, here to begin with this, I will first it is very necessary to uh, discuss basic concepts and notations of set theory. So, I will begin with the uh, concepts of uh, set theory and give you some notations and then after that it will be possible to uh, define the axioms and then build the probability theory based on these axioms. Okay. Um, now, of course, a set you have already been using this word and so, I will just formally write down that a set is a collection of objects, points, whatever you uh, may consider, whatever the collection and this can be finite or infinite. The number of elements of the set may be finite or infinite so innumerable examples. Now, if you consider a town with its population, then obviously, the people living in the town would be a finite number. So, that will be a finite set and if you consider a set in R 2, which is bounded by a closed curve and then if you consider all the points in this set, then they will infinite. In, in fact, they are not even countable. Right. So, a set in R 2 bounded by. So, this will be an infinite uh, set and so on. Now, we will always refer to when I develop the uh, concepts of set theory, um, there will be a universal set which I will refer to as omega and then we will take subsets of omega and um, define all the uh, possible or whatever the operations we can do on this uh, on the this uh, set of subsets of omega. Right. Now, um, definition 2.1 for two sets a and b subsets of omega that means, contained in uh, omega, we define uh, some joint or union referred to by different names. So, uh, basically the union of two sub subsets a b, then we define it as a union b and this is equal to uh, all elements of omega such that omega belongs to a or omega belongs to b. Right. And if you uh, look at it um, uh, diagram was why. So, if I have this bigger set as my sort of omega, this is a, this is b, then you see if you consider all this portion this will be a union b, because an element which is either in a or in b can be or which is in both a or b, then that constitutes your union of the two subsets a b. Okay. Then similarly, intersection or product, these are the two names given to of a b and the notation is a intersection b and this is here for all omega in capital omega such that omega belongs to A and omega belongs to B. So, the common common this and here in this diagram you see that the intersection would be this, this portion right, which I have shaded differently. So, this portion will uh, denote the uh, intersection of the two sets and uh, okay, fine. Then similarly, if we define um, a complement of a set A which means uh, and we denote it by a c or a bar. Uh, so, complement means that uh, okay, I did not write down the def that means uh, this is um, a complement is all omega belonging to this such that uh, omega does not belong to a this is the idea. Right. So, if this is your a and this whole is omega then all elements which are not in a form the set a complement. Okay. Definition 2.4 is difference of two sets, two sets difference of two sets a b is a set a minus b, we refer to it as a minus b or a intersection b complement. So, that is all omega uh, the universal set such that omega, omega belongs to a, but omega does not belong to b, because it is intersection b complement. So, if you use the definition of the product, then the elements here must belong to both a and b complement. That means, the elements which are belonging to A, but not belonging to B, but not belonging to B. So, in that case, uh, I have drawn the figure, uh, figure 3 should be. Uh, so, A and this is B. No, so, I have to say uh, B complement. Okay. This is not shaded correctly. Yeah. So, if I am saying that this is whole of A, and this whole is B I am referring to. 
right, because the elements here are in A and not in B. So, this is the right uh, diagram for A uh, intersection B complement, right, which is A minus B. So, all components, all elements which are in A, but not in B will be referred to by this one here. Okay. Um, now, let us just, uh, so what we are asking you, Achha, so I probably drew the, okay. so this was the figure for this, right. Okay. So, I will do it here. So, now it says that the question is draw the Venn diagram for A intersection, um, A complement intersection B. So, here if you have this and if this is A and um, this is B, then if I want A complement intersection B, then an element which is in B, but not in A. So, then it will be this, this is what I had drawn. Okay. So, the elements here, they are not in A, but in B, that is A bar intersection B. Okay. Um, again, I will take some more examples. Uh, omega, uh, let us say the universal set contains the numbers 1 to 10. Okay. And then, if I define A as set of all odd numbers and B contains 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then A union B would contain elements which are here as well as in B. And so, the union would be 1, 2, 3 is here, 4, 5, 4 is here. Uh, so, it will get added here, 5 is here, then 6 is in B. So, that gets added and then 7 and 9. So, this is your A union B. right? and A intersection B, you have to look for the common numbers in A and B. So, 3 and 5, 3 and 5 are the common numbers. So, that forms your set A intersection B and similarly, you can write down all the others. Uh, for example, A complement would be A complement would be all even numbers, right? because this is all odd. So, A complement would be all um, even numbers and similarly, B complement, you can write down the numbers, which are not present in B and then whatever other uh, operations we have defined, you can uh, work out the examples. Now, I will take a case of the infinite uh, set. So, here if you take omega to be uh, uh, all collection of x comma y, uh, that means points in R 2. So, this is these are the points in R 2, so that x is uh, non negative, y is less than or equal to 0. So, if you are um, you consider this as the whole plane R 2, then your omega is all this. That means, here uh, your uh, y is no less than 0 and x is positive. So, whole of this quadrant, the last quadrant right. in R 2, this is the first, second, third and fourth quadrant. So, we are in the fourth quadrant, our omega obviously, then is a infinite set. Okay. Now, uh, if I take A to be the set consisting of all points, which um, for which the x coordinate is less, zero, less greater than 0, less than 12 and y of course, is less than or equal to 0 then of course, the picture is not. So, if, if this is my number 12 on the x axis, then you can see that the whole of this, you can say set, again it is an infinite set, where y is less than 0 and x coordinates are between 0 and 12, that forms your A. right? And so B is all x between 0 and 15 and then y is minus 10 and 0. So, um, minus 10 and 0. Okay. So, this is minus 10 and 0, fine. So, that means, if I draw a line here, then my b extends like this and x is up to 15. So, now in this case, uh, your b is this set. So, b is this portion, right. The x is extending up to 15 and y is from 0 to minus 10. So, that is your b. Now, you see that um, if you want to write um, a intersection b, a intersection B, then this will be all points x, y. So, that x, because you see in A, x is bet between 0 and 12. In B, it is between 0 and 15. So, when you want to take all common points in A and B, then it will be x between 0 and 12. And here, um, your y is less than or equal to 0. So, y in A was extending up to infinite minus infinity. So, in this case, the common thing would be that y is between minus 10 and 0. So, that will give you the intersection. right? And of course, um, uh, I have already used the concept that uh, A is a subset of B or that means, here A and B are subsets of omega. So, here uh, you can see that B is not a proper subset of A, because you can find points 
which are in B, but which are not in A. So, this is the other concept that you use. So, here I have said that B is not a proper subset of A. That is, we I showed you that there are uh, points in B, which are not in A. right? and that you can see, because the set of element, this we have already seen, that when you take points for which the x coordinate is between 12 and 15, and the y coordinate is between minus 10 and less than 0. Here of course, x is greater than 12, because a contains, uh, uh, a contains um, x less than or equal to 12. So, if the point is uh, not in a, then the corresponding x coordinate should be greater than 12, right? and this is less than or equal to 15. So, these are the points, which are in B, but not in A. So, uh, A is B is not a proper subset of A. So, now let me just also give you a formal definition of a proper subset. What do we mean by a proper subset? That is, if B is a subset of A, but B is not equal to A, then we say that B is said to be a proper subset. That means, uh, when uh, B is a subset of A and B is not equal to A, it means that there are points in A, which are not in B. Whereas, because B is a subset of A, so all points of B are, uh, all elements of B are also elements of A, but since B is not equal to A, that means there is at least one element of A, which is not an element of B. And so, then we in that case, we say that B is a proper subset of A, and we write it as B without the equality sign here. So, B is a proper subset of A, this is the notation for. So, therefore, um, now at least um, whatever um, different, I mean the words that I, that I use the word proper, not a proper subset. So, now you know what is a proper subset. So, now let me continue with the definitions and uh, with the basic concepts of set theory. So, A and B are said to be mutually exclusive or disjoint, if A intersection B is empty. That means, there are no common elements uh, in A and B. Right? So, uh, for example, in the example 2.2 that we just considered, you know the coordinate in the subset of R 2, uh, you see uh, A intersection B is actually this set, which has so many points. And so, it is not empty. Therefore, A and B are not disjoint or they are not mutually exclusive. And so, as, as we go along, you will see so many examples, when um, A and B have some points in common, then they will not be considered disjoint. If they do not have any points in common, they will be considered as disjoint or mutually exclusive. Now, some more um, uh, concepts dealing with uh, laws and this thing, dealing with union intersection and complements of sets. So, here um, if now I am talking of A, B and C, they are three subsets of your universal set omega. Then, um, item potency law says that, you know, when you operate A with itself, then A intersection A is A or A union A will also be A. So, that means, the uh, uh, union and intersection are item, uh, the, the, uh, the concept that we are, the operations we have defined for the sets, um, uh, these two um, are item potent. Okay, then, uh, uh, commutative law says that, it does not matter whether you add A to B, or you add B to A. So, therefore, A union B is equal to B union A. Similarly, A intersection B is B intersection A. So, the uh, order is not important, which set you write first. Uh, associative laws, uh, here if you are saying, you taking intersection of A with intersection of B intersection C, uh, C then it is, uh, you can also write this as, you first take the intersection of A and B, and then take the intersection with C. So, it does not matter. So, the associative law holds here. <coughs> Similarly, with union also, with respect to union also the associative law holds. That is, whether you add A to the union of B and C, or you add first take the union of A and B, and then union with C does not matter, uh, they are the same. Now, the, and the distributive law is with respect to both the operations intersection and union. So, when you take A intersection B union C, you can write this as a intersection B, and then union with A intersection C. So, A gets distributed, right. And uh, similarly, A union B intersection C will give you uh, A union B, then intersection A union C. So, these laws hold. And just for completeness sake, I have uh, written them down here. Then, uh, De Morgan's laws are also uh, important, and we use them, we will be using them throughout, and therefore, it is better to talk about them right now. And so, the first law says that A intersection, A intersection B complement is equal to A complement union B complement. Right? And if you see diagrammatically, 
uh, this set is omega and if this is A and this is B, then A intersection B is this, right? the darkly shaded portion. And so, its complement will be the portion which is shaded by the lines. And you can see that the uh, sh portion shaded with the lines is nothing but the um, union of A complement and B complement. right? because this portion gives you B complement and this portion gives you A complement. So, the union of both the two, so the, the two are equal, but you can also prove it otherwise. Um, see what we are saying is that, if omega belongs to A intersection B complement, this implies that omega does not belong to A intersection B, right? which means that uh, omega should not belong to at least one of them because if omega belongs to both A and B, then omega will belong to A intersection B. So, since we are saying omega does not belong to A intersection B, this implies that omega does not belong to A complement or omega, uh, that means omega belongs to A complement or omega belongs to B complement. Right? If we do not want omega to belong to both A and B, then it must not belong to, it must belong to either A complement or B complement, which implies by our definition of union that omega must belong to A complement union B complement. Now, remember in um, two, um, okay, I did not say this out uh, in the beginning, but I should have said that whenever you are wanting to say that two sets are equal, then what does it mean? Yeah, maybe I should spell it out. Um, a equal to B implies, yes, component wise that if, if omega belongs to A, this implies omega belongs to B and if omega belongs to B, it should imply that omega belongs to A. Right. This, is, this is the way of saying that the two sets are the same. So, here um, I am when I want to show that these two sets are the same. Right now, I have shown you that if omega belongs to A intersection B complement, then it must belong here, but I must show the other way also. That is, if omega belongs here, then it should belong to this and which I am showing, showing. Similarly, if omega belongs to A complement union B complement, that means, it if it is here, then this implies that omega either belongs to A complement or omega belongs to B complement, which implies that omega does not belong to A intersection B. Right, because either A belongs to uh, double omega belongs to A complement, which means that it does not belong to A or it does not belong to B, which means that omega does not belong to A intersection B, and so it belongs to A intersection B complement. So, I have shown you both ways, and therefore, the two sets are equivalent. So, similarly, I am writing out all the other uh, laws here, De Morgan's laws, which you can sit down and work out yourself. So, there you will have to show that you first start with an element here and show that it belongs here, then you will have to pick up an ele any element from here and show that it belongs to the uh, set on the left. So, that exercise we should now sit down and do for the remaining uh, de Morgan's laws, but <coughs> we can just look at them. So, this is in a way a complement of this says that A union B complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement. Then if you take the complement of the complement, uh, you cut back to the set A. right? that of course, in words you can immediately say it out. And um, one way to classify, uh, characterize uh, that one set is a subset of another. So, B is a subset of A, if and only if, when you take the intersection, you will get the set B. right? If B is a subset of a set A, then when you take the intersection, the only element, all the common elements must belong to B. Similarly, uh, you can also through union, you can characterize that if B is a subset of A, then A union B is equal to A, because B is not adding any uh, new elements to the set uh, A union B, and therefore, uh, A union B remains equal to A. Right. Now, so far I had defined uh, union intersection complements for uh, two or three sets, but now we can extend this notion to uh, any number of sets. And here, um, I am just taking i to be the index set, where the index, index set can be, the i can be having finite elements of uh, finite indices or infinite indices. Um, so, this holds for whatever the uh, uh, status of i is. So, now, if all these are subsets of omega, where um, i is in the intersect, in index set i, then you can say that the intersection of all the subsets, so that i belongs to i, is omega belonging to the universal set, such that omega belongs to a i for all i. 
right. So, if an element is present in all the AIs, then it will be in the present in, in the intersection and union of course, would imply that uh, all omega, uh, omega belonging to A i for at least one i. right? So, uh, an omega belongs to the union, if omega belongs to at least one of the A i's. Okay. It can belong to more than one, but it must belong to at least one of the A i's. Right? And then uh, similarly, you know using the concepts here, the definitions here, you can define now that uh, the, uh, yeah, this is not very, very nicely. Okay. So, i belongs to i, in, if you are taking the intersection of all the a i's, so that i belongs to i and then you take the complement. So, then uh, by this law, you immediately write it down as union a i complement. Yeah. And again in words, you can say it out the same thing and similarly here, this is the, um, this is the equivalent of this, when you are taking more than three sets or two sets, this is uh, union a i i belonging to i, the complement of this will be the intersection of the complements of all the a i's. Right. Okay. So, uh, given this, now let us uh, get started with uh, uh, talking about uh, pro how we go about uh, defining probability of an event and so on. So, before that I will simply uh, first spell out what we mean by sample space and then events and then we talk of uh, how we go about estimating the probability of events. Okay. So, um, again I will begin with examples to give you an idea what we mean by sample spaces. So, for, for example, if you consider the experiment of tossing a coin. So, a single coin is tossed and so what are the possible outcomes? Either I will get a head or a tail. These are the two possible outcomes. So, you just uh, collect all possible outcomes of an experiment and that is the our that will be our concept of a sample space and again I will refer to it as the, uh, for the, that particular experiment, this is my universal set. Similarly, if I toss two coins together, now the thing is that you are tossing the two coins and so let us just uh, name one coin as one number 1 and the other as number 2. In that case, you see when both of them show head, then this will be h h. Now, here if the first coin shows a head and the second coin shows a tail, then it will be h t. And if the first coin shows a tail, and the second coin shows a head, then the uh, outcome would be T h. right? And in, in case both of them show T t uh, tails, then this will be T t. So, this, these, this will be the set of all possible outcomes, when you are tossing two coins together. Okay? And so, this will be your uh, sample space, this will be the sample space. If you are uh, now um, uh, tossing, uh, uh, two, you are tossing two six phase die. So, here again, uh, we will, uh, what we will do is, we will say that, um, uh, we will number one die as uh, uh, number one and the other die will be number two. And so, therefore, uh, the uh, outcomes will be recorded as whatever the number shows for the first die and whatever the number shows for the second die. And in that case, it will be a pair of numbers. So, one to six and therefore, the possible outcomes will be one, one, one comma two and up one comma six. That means, the first die can, uh, shows one and the second die shows 1, 2 or 6. And similarly, you can then say that it is 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 6. So, therefore, it is important when you are um, uh, uh, throwing the uh, throwing 2 die, then you have to number them as uh, 1 and 2. So, that because uh, what show the arrangement, because here this is an ordered arrangement and therefore, there is a difference between 1, 2 and 2, 1. Okay. And so, we have to record all possible outcomes and therefore, here this will be the um, collection of all 36 outcomes uh, and that will constitute your uh, sigma space, uh, the, sorry the uh, sample space. Okay. So, therefore, uh, just trying to show you that uh, uh, when you uh, consider an experiment, then you have to be very careful in um, the recording the outcomes and so here for the for when you are tossing two coins then we have to number we will have to number one as first coin and this other one as second coin and then we can record the outcomes similarly when you are tossing two die then you have to uh, you know allocate one die as number one and the other one as number two to be able to record all possible outcomes in a proper way then the possible outcomes I have not listed, but this table shows that you know it can be uh, the first one is uh, the first die is showing 1 and then the second die is also showing 1. 
then it could be 2 up to 6. Similarly, it could 2 1 2 2 2 6 then 3 1 3 2 3 6 and so on up to this. So, here the total number of uh, possible outcomes you see will be 36 right and again I will refer to this as a sample space. So, um, now uh, formal definition of a sample space can be immediately uh, uh, said, said and that is that the set containing all possible outcomes of an experiment is the sample space corresponding to that experiment. Okay. It is not very clearly written, but you can just read it. That means, the set containing all possible outcomes of an experiment is the sample space corresponding to that experiment. So, this will be our concept and here you see that in this case of course, when you do any experiment, the uh, you expect the outcomes to be finite uh, and uh, so, uh, my sample space in this case would be uh, the number of, I will just list the number of possible outcomes and that collection of possible outcomes. So, you can see that uh, the sample space can have any kind of uh, uh, any kind of structure. So, here in this case for example, it was h and t, these are the possible outcomes. In this case, it was h h, h t, t h, t t and now in this case, it is pair of numbers, where uh, the uh, uh, numbers can differ from 1 to 6 for the either uh, this thing and so collection of those 36 pairs of numbers is your uh, uh, set of uh, are the elements of your uh, sample space omega and that will be. So, now I will uh, go on to defining the uh, concept of events and then we will try to estimate the probability of events. Now, I will define uh, what we mean what we mean by an event. So, any subset E of the sample space. So, first uh, the idea of a sample space is clear that means, all collection of all possible outcomes. Now, any subset of the sample space is known as an event, we will define this way. And we have seen that if uh, for example, two subsets are there E and F are subsets of omega, they are both are events. Then whatever operations we have done so far, we have discussed on the on the uh, subsets, then E union F, E intersection F, E complement and whatever, you know, we, we discuss all those various operations on the um, uh, subsets, then all those will again be subsets of omega and therefore, by our definition they will again be events. So, in fact, um, uh, when I showed you the extended concept of union and intersection, where you took um, a number of uh, subsets, whether finite or infinite and again if you um, take their intersection and uh, union and uh, complements and so on, they will again all be subsets of omega. So, therefore, you can see that that uh, the collection of events becomes very, very large and in fact, um, it is formalized, which I am not uh, actually talking to you about. I will just mention the name that it is known as the sigma algebra of events. So, essentially uh, the uh, what we have to remember is that, uh, the however way we can generate subsets of omega, then those uh, which, which can be obtained as through union intersection and complement through these three operations, whatever subsets of omega we can obtain, they will all be uh, uh, considered as events uh, for the corresponding experiment. Okay. Now, uh, examples are there, when you toss a single coin, we saw that the, uh, the space omega, the sample space omega just contained these two possible outcomes and now the subsets can be the singletons h t and of course, we always include um, consider pi also as a subset. So, therefore, uh, these will be the possible subsets or the events uh, in this case. When you are tossing two coins, then uh, you see your uh, possible outcomes were 4 in fact, h h, h t, t h and t t. Now, you can start forming subsets, I have just uh, written down a few. You can take this each, uh, uh, each outcome of each element of uh, the sample space omega as a uh, subset and so it is an event, where you can put two together that means, either head or tail or tail or head and this will again also form an event and you can then form. In, in, in fact, uh, uh, in the last lecture I had shown you that if um, a set has whatever the number of elements, then the possible number of total number of subsets of that set would be 2 raise to 4. Remember, it was an application of the of binomial theorem and so on. So, um, the number of subsets here in fact, would be uh, 2 raise to 4, which will be 16. So, you can list out all the possible events 
uh, that can be formed from uh, this particular for this particular experiment of tossing two coins. Now, again as an example, if when you are tossing two six faced die, then um, consider the subset uh, which has both the uh, numbers showing that means, both the faces show the same number. Right. So, both the numbers are the same and so here uh, the uh, components in A would be 1, 1, 2, 2, the pairs 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5 and 6, 6. So, this will be one event that means, you can also describe it in words that both the faces, both the numbers are the same. And B for example, I have listed uh, pairs which where the two numbers add up to 7. So, the sum of the two numbers add up to 7 and this way you can go on. In fact, uh, here the number of subsets will be very large, because uh, omega itself contains 36 pairs and so the number of subsets would become uh, this thing. right? So, um, yeah, but now uh, one word of caution and that is uh, we when we are uh, defining uh, the sample space, we have to be careful uh, as to what our experiment is. And here uh, for example, you have to, uh, so in, in fact, I have to uh, say that there are two possible cases. Uh, one is with replacement, wherever this is relevant and the other possibility can be without replacement. Okay. So, we have to be careful uh, how the experiment is being conducted and then uh, you can define your uh, sample space. That means, the possible outcomes that can be there of the experiment. So, now consider the case that two cards are to be drawn from a pack of 52 cards and if you are doing this replace uh, this drawing of the card, that means, you draw a card, you look at it, note it down somewhere and then put it back in the pack and then again you draw the second card. If this is your experiment, then uh, let us say that i comma j stands for. So, you will note down uh, when you uh, take out a card, you look at the number, uh, you look at the card. So, then the first uh, index here uh, tells you what card it is, what type. That means, whether it is a club, spade, diamond or heart. So, the i will refer to uh, c, s, d or h. That means, four possibilities and j will stand for the number uh, from 1 to 13. That means, whether it is an ace, it is a number 2, number 3 or number 13. right? Uh, so, then uh, this pair will in, uh, donate, uh, I mean denote the uh, type of the, the card that you got and so your omega will be uh, collection of all such pa uh, two pairs i comma j and k comma l, uh, where again a k indicates the uh, type of the card and l indicates the number. So, therefore, um, and um, i and k uh, can be anything from c s d h because you are doing it replacement and then j and l are the numbers 1 to 13. So, essentially uh, the way you can describe the experiment is that the first in the first uh, draw of the card, you it can be any 52 cards and since you have replaced it in the pack, again your choice of drawing a card is from among the 52 cards in the pack. So, therefore, the total number of um, outcomes that are there is 52 into 52. Okay. And so, uh, this actually by the way denotes the cardinality of a set. So, which means that this is the what is the total number of elements in the uh, set. So, here the sample space will consist of uh, 52 into 52 such collection of pairs. Okay. So, to indicate to the what the cards you have got. But now, if uh, you are doing it without replacement, then you do not want i and k to be the same and j and l to be the same. That means, once you have drawn a card, it is not there in the pack. So, it will not appear again. right? In that case, your choice will become that means, the first draw you have a choice from among the 52 cards, but in the second draw it will be only out of 51, because one card has been replaced uh, is, is not there, it is uh, kept aside. And therefore, uh, in this case you will uh, you'll have to be careful, because your choice of uh, the sample space will not will contain such pairs, but where i will not be k and j will not be l. So, uh, the whole idea is to say that um, you just do not write out, uh, you have to be careful when you spell out all the possible uh, points that can be there in the sample space. Okay. Now, let us begin uh, talking about the axioms of probability. That means, how do we characterize a function uh, to or whatever we mean by probability. Uh, what type of what should 
I mean uh, the characteristics it should have. So, here again I am now referring to uh, the sample space omega and then uh, E is some subset of omega, which again is an event. So, then uh, we say that the function p, which will assign. So, essentially what we are saying is that p assigns, uh, I am okay, writing capital P. So, p is assigning E to a real number, that is uh, it takes it to p E which belongs to the real number r. Right. So, you can say that it, this is a mapping or an assignment. So, here for every event E, for every subset of omega, I am uh, assigning a real number. And so, P E is a real number here and uh, P E must be between 0 and 1, that is the first requirement. Then for the whole space, for the whole sample space, P omega should be 1. right? And uh, axiom 3 says that for any sequence of mutually exclusive events, that means you just take any collection of uh, events E i, that means subsets of omega, such that they are mutually exclusive. So, which means that E i intersection E j is empty for all i j in i. right? So, this is the collection which can be a finite, infinite does not matter, uh, but we are referring it to as the index set i and then probability of union E i, i belonging to i should be equal to the sum of the probabilities. So, because uh, the events are mutually exclusive, they are disjoint. So, therefore, when I add up the, uh, I compute the probability of the union of the these E i's, then they should, it should be equal to the sum of the probabilities. So, these are the three uh, characteristics that we associate with the probability function. And, um, Using this, you will see that uh, uh, any function f p, which satisfies these three axioms, uh, will define the probability. And this is actually what we say is that p e is the probability of occurrence of e. So, remember in the beginning, I started saying that we would be uh, trying to develop the theory of estimating the occurrence of an event. So, here um, we have now defined something, which we refer to as the probability of occurrence of e. So, this is the uh, uh, and we will now see that what uh, things you can derive. So, the basically using these three axioms, we will be able to build up the probability theory. And the, the first simple uh, observation that you can make is that in this case from axiom 3, if you choose your E i to be the whole set omega, that is your sample space and all other E i's you choose as empty sets right for i greater than or equal to 2, then uh, because this axiom must hold. So, uh, here the union will become your uh, set omega, right, because all other E i's are empty, E 1 is omega. So, union gives you omega and uh, from here, um, from axiom 2, P omega is 1. So, you get this. Okay, p omega I have to write, okay, so that is the second, so that is not a big deal. I mean, okay, what I am saying is that is this validates the axiom, because we have already assumed that p omega is uh, 1. And so, here also if you put E 1 as omega and all other E i is as uh, empty sets, then you get that p omega is 1. Right. Now, um, here uh, in, in this case, if you look at this, uh, you want to compute the probability of let us say h and t. So, uh, here if I take my what will be my subsets here, this would be uh, in, in the first example, uh, my E 1 would be h, E 2 will be t. Right. So, in that case from this axiom, what I will get is that uh, p e 1 plus p e 2 right, is equal to 1, because uh, e 1 union e 2 is my whole space omega, p omega is 1. So, therefore, I get that p e 1 plus p e 2 is this, but then I should be able to compute. Uh, okay. So, we then what I am trying to say is that from here, I should be able to show that p e 2 is equal to well, from here it follows that p e 2 is 1 minus p e 1. So, we got that using axiom 3 in the case when a single die is rolled, um, 
or toss, then we got that P E 1, if E 1 is the event that it is showing a head and E 2 is the event that it is showing a T, then we got that P E 1 plus P E 2 is 1, which is equal to probability of H plus probability of T. Now, you, we understand the concept of unbiased coin, that means, uh, it is equally likely whether a head shows or a, a tail shows. In that case, the two probabilities are equal that is what we mean by an unbiased coin. And so, therefore, it will immediately follow from here that p h and equal to p t is equal to half, because they both most uh, they both must add up to 1. So, therefore, uh, this is now that is what I am showing how you uh, apply the axioms to arrive at the uh, probabilities of, uh, of the events. So, here of course, we assume that it is unbiased coin. Similarly, when a die is rolled and so, uh, you have the 6 numbers showing up either of any of the 6 numbers can show up. So, uh, here again applying axiom 3, you will see that uh, the uh, probabilities of all numbers, show, but that means p 1 plus p 2 probability of p 2 plus prob up to probability p 6, that should be equal to 1. And since, we are again saying that all sides are equally likely, which means that uh, probability of p 1 prob equal is equal to probability of p 2. Uh, I mean, is equal to the probability of 2, then it is equal to probability 3 and so on. So, all 6 together. So, that means, uh, essentially what we are saying is that 6, any of them, this, this is equal to 1, which implies that p 1 is 1 by 6, which is equal to all other this thing, right, for i varying from 2 to 6. So, we immediately uh, conclude that um, uh, probability of each face showing up is the same, which is 1 by 6. Now, um, uh, what happens is that um, most of the time in many, many situations, uh, we know already by because of the nature of the experiment and so on, that uh, the um, elements of the sample space have equally likely outcomes. Just as I, because that is how I showed you these two examples, that when you are throwing a un, throwing up a unbiased coin, then you know that uh, whatever the outcome has the same probability, that a, a head showing up or a tail showing up, they are the same. Similarly, as I said that if um, uh, you are throwing up a die and you have no reason to say that it is a loaded die or a biased die, then in that case we expect that any of the six numbers will uh, have the same probability, will show up with the same. So, um, the, we will see that and of course, we have to be, uh, I'm, what I am trying to say that I am giving you an alternate way of defining the probability of an event, but the basic assumption uh, for this definition is that um, your sample space has this property that uh, uh, all the outcomes in the sample space have the same probability, uh, equal likely chance of occurring. Right? If that is there, if this is satisfied, then uh, let, let us just start with this definition that suppose omega has n number of points, that means the cardinality of omega is n and uh, the and then um, sorry and the number of points in a where a is an event oh, okay a is a subset of omega right and then we are saying that the number of points in a is m then we define the probability of a as m divided by n. That means, the number of points available in A or you can also there is another way of saying it that the number of favorable cases. That means, uh, the number of points which actually are in A, that means for occurring of A, those are the two points which will occur. So, then uh, uh, the definition of the uh, event A is number of favorable cases for A divided by the total number of cases. That means, total possible outcomes and the outcomes which are part of your event A. So, then this is the definition and now you can very quickly verify that the three axioms, because remember I said that any definition of probability must satisfy the three axioms. So, uh, since A is a subset of omega, this means cardinality of A is less than or equal to cardinality of omega, right, which implies that m is less than or equal to n. Right. Therefore, probability A is less than or equal to 1 and also by definition probability A is greater than or equal to 0, because m is either 0 or it is a positive number. So, therefore, uh, this satisfies the first axiom. Right. Then similarly, if you want to um, uh, so and probability omega would be um, n by n, which is 1. Right. 
because omega has n points. So, therefore, n upon n the, the de, uh, verifying the definition. So, this probability is 1. So, this axiom is also satisfied. Now, if I take a set of uh, events a i's uh, i in, in an index at i capital I and here since we are taking the omega as the finite space. So, i is also a finite index set and then a uh, cardinality of each a i is m i that means, the number of points of the sample space in a i is m i right. Then we want to look at the probability of union a i and um, here uh, the a i is are disjoint because remember I am verifying uh, the axiom 3 of uh, probability. So, here um, a i is are disjoint that means, the elements of the sample space which are in one a i are not in any other. So, all these uh, a i is are disjoint meaning that uh, the points in one a i, the elements of sigma in one a i are not in any other a i. Right? So, in that case now, if you want to compute uh, probability of uh, union a i, i belonging to i, then this will simply be, because the number of elements of sigma of omega in union a i will be sigma m i, since the elements in each a i are different from all others. So, therefore, we will just add up the, the total number of points, which are in the union here will be sigma m i. And so, by our definition, this will again be uh, when you are computing the probability for this union, it will be sigma m i, i belonging to capital I divided by n. And now, here this sigma I can write as individual sigmas, that means, I can write this as summation of m i by n, i varying from 1 to n and each m i by n. So, a particular for a particular i, the m i by n is the probability of a i and so this is the sum of the probabilities. So, uh, axiom 3 is also satisfied here. So, that means, this particular definition when you assume that the uh, outcomes, uh, the uh, occurrences or the elements of a uh, sample space have uh, equally likely chance of being uh, of occurring, then uh, and I take the uh, definition of the probability of an event as the uh, number of elements in that uh, event, number of elements of the sample space in that event divided by the total number of elements in the uh, sample space. So, m by n if I take that as the probability here, then uh, this is uh, it satisfies all the three axioms. So, this is a very convenient um, way of uh, computing the probability, provided of course, you can assure that the, uh, L, uh, the uh, outcomes in the sample space are all equally likely. And um, uh, yeah, so uh, if you can assume that, if you can assure that, then uh, we can use this uh, way of computing the probability of any event, where we can just look at the number of favorable cases for a particular event and then uh, count them up and then divide by the total number of outcomes in the sample space and you get this. Right. Now, I just want to uh, make another uh, comment here, uh, note here and this is you know we sometimes uh, uh, refer to the probability in terms of percentage. So, for example, if you make a statement that in a group of 20 people, 10 percent are smokers. Sometimes he also refer to the probability in this way. So, this would be interpreted as probability of a member of the group being a smoker is 0 0.1. So, 10 percent, so 10 upon 100. Okay. And here, uh, if you want to interpret it in terms of your m by n, then uh, you see your n is 20 and the 10 percent of 20 is 2. So, m is 2. So, therefore, 2 by 20, which is 1 by 10, which again is equal to 0 0.1. So, please remember that uh, as in problem, I mean as the course develops, we will often be referring to the probabilities in terms of percentages and so the interpretation is simple, right. Okay. You just take the fraction which is, so 10 percent means 10 upon 100 and that gives you 0 0.1. So, that will be your probability. So, exactly uh, the same way you are counting as the doing here m by n. So, therefore, all the conditions, uh, all the axioms are satisfied. So, this is also a proper definition, but of course, this is valid when you uh, can uh, assure that the uh, uh, all outcomes in the um, uh, sample space are equally likely. right? Okay. So, I will quickly uh, take up this example. Now, here a committee of 5 is to be selected from a group of 6 men and 9 women. right? Now, if the selection is made randomly, so this is important. Since the selection is made randomly, that means that the choice of any of the men or any of the women is uh, equally likely. Under this assumption, 
we say that uh, what is the probability that the committee consists of three men and two women. So, if you want to compute this, I will apply this definition, because uh, the uh, uh, example here, the experiment here uh, satisfies this condition. And therefore, you see now here, I will uh, apply the or uh, this thing, multinomial thing. So, uh, you want to select uh, three men out of six and two women out of nine women. So, this gives you the total number of points in your set A right or the event E, if you define the event E as three men and two women are selected, then this cardinality is given by 6, 3, 9, 2 right. And the total number of ways in which you can select 5 uh, people from the set of 15 is 15 uh, choose 5 and therefore, the number of favorable cases is this, total number of cases is this. So, the probability of selecting a committee of 3 men and 2 women is given by this ratio. And similarly here, um, an urn contains n balls of which one is special. If k of these balls are withdrawn one at a time with each selection being equally likely. So, here again the same thing is stated. So, if each selection is being equally likely, that means, whatever the balls are left, uh, choosing a ball from there is equally likely, then what is the probability that the special ball is chosen. So, here again uh, probability the special ball is chosen. So, here you see uh, you have to choose the special ball. So, 1, one upon 1 the probability of choosing that is 1 upon 1. Then from the remaining n minus 1 you want to choose k minus 1. So, this gives you the number of favorable cases, the number of uh, cases in which the special ball will get selected. And then uh, the total number of uh, ways of selecting k balls from n balls is n c k. So, that uh, number when you compute comes out to be k by n. So, the whole idea is that um, things become much easier, if you uh, have this condition being satisfied, then uh, this is a very convenient way of uh, determining the probability of an event.